Hello, I'm Lydia. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm just cooling off this melted butter because today we're going to make some brownies. So I have the ingredients for the brownies we're going to make right here. But I also made these brownies this morning. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about them. So I, instead of, so what I did was I substitute different things for all of these ingredients. And I'll tell you what they are. For the eggs, I used an avocado. And for the sugar, I used, well, this is monk fruit sugar. And I used that in here. No, wait, this is regular sugar. I used monk fruit sugar in there. One thing I discovered, though, is one cup of monk fruit sugar should be less. If, it call, if your recipe calls for one cup of sugar, you want to use more like three-fourths of a cup of monk fruit sugar because these are a little sweet to me, which we'll have some testers later test them and see what they think. And then I did use vanilla, and then this is um, just all-purpose flour. And instead of that, I used half a cup of almond flour that I ground up my almonds for. I think you've seen me do that before when I make almond milk. And then, let's see what else. And that's it. I used the cocoa. I used the same cocoa. This is unsweetened cocoa. So we're going to go ahead and make... So does that make that gluten-free? This makes this gluten-free and sugar-free. Oh, sure. But, again, it's really super sweet. <laughs> so I would, I would definitely there cut goes back. There the theory that if it's sugar-free, it's not sweet. Right. And I will cut back next time on the monk fruit sugar because it just seems to make it so sweet. So anyway, this is the melted butter which is what I use, the cashew cream. I don't know if I mentioned that. Yes, I use cashew cream. I ground up some cashews in here, cashew cream. Ground up cashews, added a little bit of water, cashew cream. Half a cup of that, it's all in there. This took about 45 minutes to bake though, I will say that, it took kind of a long time. So this recipe will probably take about the same, maybe a little bit less. I always start out with 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven. To, it's supposed to be at 350, I'm doing it at 375. There's that. Oh. I'm also turning on water for something we're gonna make a little bit later. So here is my melted butter. Again, I used half a cup of cashew cream for it to replace the butter in these. Okay, and then to this, we're gonna add the cup of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. And we're going to add, I think I'm just going to stir this up first. Stir this till it's a little bit creamy. I'm going to use um, a mixer maybe. I'm going to just kind of play it by ear and see how well it mixes up. Our eggs are here. Whoops. I'm going to go ahead and mix those up a little bit before I add them. Um, Again, I always like to keep things as light as I can. Do, do I eat sugar? Yes. Do I eat gluten? Yes. I'm not allergic to it or have a sensitivity to it, but I always feel better if I can make things a little bit healthier. So that's why I just experimented this morning with this and hopes, and it, it, they really are good. It's just you probably, if you use a whole cup of monk fruit sugar, you'll want to just have little pieces of it, which is actually better anyway. So. You're doing the reverse now. You found the sugar for the gluten free and you're recreating it in a more standard. Yes. This is your standard brownie mix. Did I say they were brownies? Yeah, they're brownies. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add this is um, a quarter teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. I'm just going to add it to my flour. Just mix it in here. I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. You could also add almond extract if you wanted to, extract, um, either one, whatever you like. So the other thing you could do if you didn't have an avocado is, and if you had applesauce, you could use applesauce to replace the avocado, the eggs. Cocoa's going in. And this is, you know, instead of buying a box mix, again, I'd rather just use these ingredients. And when you think about it, it's not that much, whoops, it's not that much different than 
using the box mix because yeah, you're pouring the box in with eggs, you gotta get your eggs out. The only difference is the flour and the sugar is mixed already. So this keeps it very healthy in the way, in the regard that there's no preservatives in it. Because if you look closely at things, you'll see that preservatives are added to cake mixes, brownie mixes. Just getting this incorporated. Got this done. Okay, I have a confession to make. <laughs> when I made these, I did forget something. So it called for, you saw me add the salt and the baking powder to this. I forgot to add it to that. Oops. So that's why I'm thinking, well, if I make it again with those ingredients, maybe it will be even better. So I would like to try it again with less monk fruit sugar and the baking powder. That's more, that's more like fudge. Yeah. It's denser. It's a little bit denser. It's so sweet. You guys have to try it. Okay, so I'm just incorporating here. See, I mean, this is so easy. Why buy a mix when you can just do it like this? That's what I say. And I was thinking how nice this would be for Valentine's Day coming up. You can make this so quickly if you want to impress somebody. Thank you. Do you want here? Look, I've got one of these. <laughs> so with cooking, you know, everybody thinks, oh, a recipe, how can you go wrong? Well, there's so many other things that can play into when you're cooking. So to me, this is kind of a tiny bit sticky for whatever reason. I'm just gonna add like a drop of water to this just to make it just a little bit looser. Just a tiny bit. Now why would you add water rather than oil? Um, I don't, because you know what? There's a half a cup of butter in here. I feel like that's enough oil. And I think that the water is better just to loosen it up just a tad. Let's see, to me, that's a little bit better. For whatever reason, it can be the temperature in your kitchen. It can be the humidity in the air. So you just have to always do each step and look at what you're doing and see the consistency you want. Now, to me, this looks pretty perfect. So. Here's pan. I'm gonna spray it with um, coconut oil spray. Doesn't have to be this. The other pan I used, um, like a pan that had flour in it, so that was that worked. This this doesn't really give it a coconut flavor when you use this, um, but it is a little bit on the sweet side. So it's always nice to use it when you're making something sweet. Okay, in it goes. Now look how fast that was. And I'm going to switch to a spatula. The yeah, it looks really good. It looks good. Somebody might get to lick the pan. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see who's been good. Oh, she's going to lick the spoon. Hmm. I almost feel like you could use less sugar in, all, in the whole recipe. Is it super sweet or mm -hmm. not so much? It's good. So that was just the Trader Joe's cocoa. So I'm in a book club and we're reading a book called, and it was such a good book, it was called, it's called The Spanish Daughter. And it was a cacao farm, like in the 1800s. Um, that's what it was, took place. So, you know, I got the brainstorm. I should buy some cacao beans. So I did. I'll show them to you. <laughs> Here they are. Raw cacao beans. Hmm, what should one do with these? So, I know I should get that in the oven, I will. But anyway, you have to crack this, this part open to get to the bean. So I'm not sure how, what I'm gonna do yet. So I'm doing some research and I did find one of the girls that was in my book club, she brought a sheet that told about how you how they're grown, because she happened to go, I forgot where she went. She went, she went on a cruise and she was actually shown some um, 
how they were grown. She was showing some plants. Anyway, here's our brownies. We got that. Ooh, so pretty. All right, these are going. Oh, thank you. I just like to add them. So I'm going to put these on the top. Actually, let's swirl some in, shall we? Yeah. I'll take a knife, swirl a few in. Like that. And then it just makes it more chocolatey, makes it more special for, thank for not Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day. Okay, going in. I'm going to set that for... Um, 20, 20 minutes. We'll see how they look after 20 minutes. I always set the timer less time than it talks. Talks. Less time than it says on a recipe um, so that I can check it. Every time I make something, it's different. I swear that you know how it goes. So these, you take it like this. So I think what I found out, because I can't, I really can't wait to use it. In a recipe, but what what happens is the bean is this. Is that the yes, that's exactly what it's called. And I better put my glasses on because I can't really see. Okay, yeah. So this is the nip, nib, nib. the nib. Um, How many do you get in a pod? Pardon me. You oh, you only get one. Oh. So here's what I what I've done research and found out. Put these in the oven. I haven't done it yet. I haven't experimented yet. But you put them in the oven. And then this coating, this little tiny coating, which is kind of thin, that one won't break, um, it kind of comes apart. They, they kind of bust open. So, and then in the field, like when you, oh, look at this one's perfect. So that's what they look like. They're, that's a whole one. And what happens is they, after they roast them, they put them on a tray and then they bring a fan in and the fan blows all of this off. Like, ah, genius. So I might do the whole process, bring a fan up, kind of have it go towards this way, and see what happens. So maybe we'll be making something with cacao beans. And then what you would do to make it chocolate is add cream and butter and sugar. So I'm kind of excited, but I haven't done it yet. That's in the future. But yeah, I just ordered them offline, raw cacao beans. Yeah, so I'm wondering if they aren't raw if they're if this is off. If I would have ordered them that raw, I'm not sure. But I think it will be kind of fun to experiment with those. So uh, those are in the oven, and we're going to come back in a minute, and I'm going to start on a. I'm going to call it. I guess I'll call it beef stroganoff. I'm not sure if I'm going to add um, sour cream to it. We'll just kind of experiment with it together. And we'll be right back and we'll do that. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm going to throw these in my hot water. It's boiling um, for my lover's stroganoff. Because after all, this is almost Valentine's Day. So we're going to make some lover's stroganoff. The, I just checked the brownies and they need another 10 minutes. Set the timer so I don't forget them. I'm um, just going to give this a quick stir. Okay, so I have three onions here. Sweet, this is a Vidalia. White, which I've never really used before. About a month ago I started using them. And I like it. I like it in savory dishes. I've always used Vidalia, and then this is just a regular yellow onion. Do I know all the differences? Not really, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use the white because it is a savory dish. Whoa. So I'm gonna cut that up. Um, I also wanted to talk about this product I bought. I got it from Costco. This is it. it it's, um, I'm not sure what they call it, 
but it's beef and it comes in these strips that are super thin and they're about this long. I cut this off already earlier today, um, but they're strips, super thin, and I've just found them to be so versatile. So stroganoff, of course, is one thing, which I'm doing today, but another thing you can make with it is nachos. So just gonna saute your meat before nachos for nachos, the same way I'm gonna do with the stroganoff. Um, one thing about the white onion that I've noticed it's very strong so I'm just trying to stay back from it just a little bit because it's gonna make me cry you can see I don't make my onions as perfect as they do on the cooking show but I'm trying to make it better like this anyway just gonna cut these up just a rough cut is good that's all I need I'm gonna move these Whew. Strong, strong. See, the Vidalia don't do that to me. They don't make me teary. The white are definitely stronger. Okay, so a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Where did I get it from? Trader Joe. Um, another product I'm going to use today is this. Um, this does have a little bit of dried cream and wheat. So if you're dairy or wheat sensitive, you wanna avoid this one, which what I would do is just use regular mushrooms. Throw these in, turn it up. Uh, anyway, we're gonna add that to this in a few minutes here. This is also a super quick dish. Um, if you are in a hurry, on a weeknight, you can really have, if you have everything prepped, you can have this done in about 15, 20 minutes. So I poured in the pasta. So that's cooking, set the timer. But it might take a little bit more than six min more minutes, but we can always check it. I did add salt to my water, because that's how you season your pasta. This is gonna cook up. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to that. I personally like to cook my onions all the way through before I add the meat. Some people um, don't do that because they like to have more of that onion flavor where they're raw, that raw onion flavor. I don't care for it raw, and neither does my husband. So I always make sure they're cooked really well. And really that's about the only ingredients. I'm just gonna, today I'm gonna add this the mushrooms i have some um, herbs from my i have some herbs over there growing parsley and then i'm going to deglaze the pan with some wine a little white little red this is red wine so that's cooking and then once you have your meat this also cooks up super fast because it's so thin um, at the end, you can add your sour cream. I didn't see sour cream in the store the day I was there. I was actually going to buy dairy-free sour cream, but I didn't. I ended up buying uh, cream fresh, which is actually even better than sour cream. It's just it's got a really nice consistency, t smell, tang to it. So I'm going to use that today, or should I use my fail of cashew cream? So this morning when I put, made the cashew cream for um, my brownies, um, I thought, okay, I'll stick it in the blender. Well, it didn't blend. So then I thought, okay, I'm gonna put all of it, cashew cream and water into my little grinder. It didn't work either. These, these, it's still kind of chunky. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but one idea was to do it in this, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how this goes. I'm gonna go ahead and add the meat now. This could be more meat than I normally would use. Um, I am having a guest for dinner, so I kinda did, I did the rest of what I had. Onions are looking pretty transparent now. So added the meat, sorry. 
Um, so to this, you could add anything. If you wanted to make it spicy, add a few little red pepper flakes would be really good in here. I am going to turn it down a little bit. Uh, what was I going to do? I'm going to check my brownies here. we got about three minutes. So, so now they've been in the oven 20, 35 minutes about. Looking good. Yeah. The non-dairy, non-gluten, and full fat. See how they look? Ooh. Yeah, these are much lighter. <laughs> those are much more dense. But I know I'm going to eat those because... Pardon me? Look at your knife plate. Wait, say it again? Look at your knife plate. You think it's, they're not done? I don't know. I feel like it's done. I think I might have hit a, um, one of my chocolate chips. Anyway, it cooks a little bit more when it's in the pan, too. So now this, so this is about 35, 40 minutes. For those. I think it's pretty good. Let's just hope when we cut into it. Anyway, we're going to set that aside. It's hot, of course. Okay. Um, I'm just going to let my, I'm going to take this and I'm going to let my um, noodles go for another minute here. I'll never forget when I first made spaghetti, when I first started cooking. You know, everybody knew you were supposed to throw it on the wall, and if it stuck, it was done. So, of course, I had to do that. <clears throat> okay, these are also, these are, I used egg noodles. You can use whatever you want. You could use gluten-free. These are egg noodles, and they are not gluten-free. And the other thing to keep in mind is they're going to cook a little bit in the oven when you... If, if you decided to heat this up later, um, they'll, they'll cook a little bit in the oven. Okay. So here's my noodles. I'm not going to rinse them. That used to be something we used to do too. Rinse your noodles, get the starch up. No, that's a big no-no nowadays. Okay, I'm just going to leave them here. Check the meat. You can see how fast this cooks up. Again, you would add any spices you like. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. Yeah. And I'm going to put in a little bit more salt. <coughs> and just for a little bit of extra flavor, I'm just going to add some of this clarifying butter. It smells really good. It's just the top. It's like when you... Um, I'm not exactly positive what clarifying butter is, but I know it's when you're cooking the butter, it's, you skim the top off, and it's like that the best part of the butter. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of that for a little bit of extra flavor. Still have a lot of liquid in my pan, so I'm going to wait to add the, um, the wine. Again, I clarifying butter. It's... Trader Joe's, I got it, but I think you can get it anywhere. So here's that cooking up. Um, what else? I think I've just I, I think I've made an executive decision. I'm not going to use the cashew butter for that because it's still chunky. <laughs> it's still a little chunky, and I'm thinking my my neighbor will be like, "What's crunchy in here?" So I think I'll just wait with that. But I am going to go ahead and add my spices. Herbs. herbs, my herbs. Okay, we're almost cooked here. Again, what have we been, 10 minutes? So fast dinner, a fast, perfect Valentine stroganoff. So when you, want, when you go ahead to, to add your sour cream or cream fresh, you want to do that at the very end. So I'm not even sure I'm going to do it until I heat, reheat this up later for dinner. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes here. 
because I don't want it to really cook. I just want it to make the dish have that creamy flavor to it. Had I gotten my cashews very creamy, I'd feel more comfortable adding those. <laughs> but since I didn't, okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of wine. I still have a considerable amount of liquid, but that's okay. It's bubbling really well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this for flavor. The alcohol burns off, but you're left with that little flavor that you go, hmm, what is that? Let that cook a little bit more, and then we'll add the mushrooms. Again, you could add regular mushrooms instead of the soup. The soup. What I liked about this soup is there are no added preservatives, so I was happy with that. So I challenge you to make something wonderful for your Valentine. This could be one of the things you choose. And we're still under 15 minutes making this, which is really fast. I'm going to go ahead and put the whole thing in a casserole dish, and that way I can heat it up in the oven later for my neighbor and friend. I meant to get this out earlier. This also qualifies as share, a share dish, um, because it's so easy to share it. Like make a couple little dishes of it and you can give it to people. Whew, super hot. But I want to keep this up high because I really want the liquid to absorb into the meat. Just be careful when you're doing this and you got a lot of liquid. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn it down now. And the soup has made it thick. It has, like I said, it had a little bit of wheat in it. So it kind of thickened it up. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing in here. This will be so much easier. If I was to try to incorporate it in there, I think I could have a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and put my noodles in there. Where's my pretty spoon? Here it is. I have to get the chocolate off this one. Got to use the pretty spoon that that special lady named Connie gave me. This is from a tree, by the way. The tree grows like this. Who would have thought? I just learned that information from Connie. My friend Connie told me that. So anyway, it is from a tree. A tree actually grows these colors. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and incorporate this in here. Yeah, it's looking good. You probably want to see this over here, don't you? Let me just move this. You could spray your pan. I never do. But you could spray the pan to, to um, prevent the sticking, of course. And then you just stir it in. Whew, smells good. And there is your lover's stroganoff for Thanksgiving. I keep saying Thanksgiving for Valentine's Day. Yay! Again, you would add this right at the end. Like if you were ser if you were going to serve it now, you would just put it in now. Um, I'm just hesitant because I am going to probably reheat this, but I think it will be all right. Let's just do it. Let's live on the edge. So how much do you add? Let's add that much. This is so creamy compared to sour cream. Very similar though. Now it's definitely a stroganoff. That's what makes it the stroganoff is the sour cream. Daisy. Daisy's our fearless watchdog. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something. Maybe next time I'll use my failed cashew cream in something. Everybody have a good week. I hope you stayed warm. Thanks for joining. Bye.